first this is an eye and i have marked the part the blue color here is the iris and the black color one is the pupil the pupil which allows the light which allows light from outside to enter inside the eye now let's zoom in a bit and draw this virtually now this is the iris and pupil in the center and uh, around the pupil there is circular muscles after it there is like there are some muscles which are radiating out now these circular muscles are called as sphincter pupillae this sphincter pupillae is supplied by the oculomotor nerve the parasympathetic nerves run via the oculomotor nerve to reach the sphincter pupillae now the muscles that were radiating out the one in the green color these muscles are called as dilator pupillae this dilator pupillae is supplied by the sympathetic nerves remember doctors sphincter pupillae is supplied by parasympathetic the dilator pupillae is supplied by the sympathetic nerves now let's see the action the sphincter pupillae constantly tries to make the pupil small that is meiosis while the dilator pupillae constantly tries to make the pupil big that is mydriasis normally these two actions cancel each other so the pupil is in its normal position but when there is a need or any pathology one can overcome the other so the pupil can become small or the pupil can get dilated let's see those conditions now this is the eye and we all just as as i just said now the cranial nerve 3 which carries the parasympathetic nerves supplies the sphincter pupillae that is this muscles now when there is a stimulation of the cranial nerve 3 or the parasympathetic fibers there is additional stimulation to the uh, sphincter pupillae muscles so let's see what happens now there is additional stimulation so there is more force trying to make the pupil small so the pupil gets small this is called as active meiosis because the sphincter pupillae muscle is actively stimulated causing meiosis that is shortening a uh, uh, small pupils now let's see the other case this is the eye and we all know that the sympathetic nerve supplies the dilator pupillae muscles now when there is an inhibition of the sympathetic nerve the supply to the dilator pupillae is cut so let's see what happens this so the force that was pulling the pupil out trying to make it big is now lost so just the force at the sphincter pupillae is now going to make the pupil small this is called as passive meiosis because the pupil is getting small that is meiosis it is not due to the action of sphincter pupillae it is due to loss of dilator pupillae so this is passive process this is passive meiosis now let's see the next case this is the eye and we know that sympathetic nerve supplies dilator pupillae now if we if we stimulate sympathetic nerve more this causes further stimulation of the dilator pupillae let's see what happens there is more more action of done by the dilator pupillae so the pupil gets big this this process is done actively by causing stimulation of the dilator pupillae and the pupil is big so this is active mydriasis now the next case this is the eye 
and the cranial nerve 3 parasympathetic supplies sphincter pupillae this yellow round muscles now if there is inhibition of the cranial nerve 3 or if there is parasympathetic inhibition there is inhibition or loss of sphincter pupillae innervation so let's see what happens the action of sphincter pupillae is lost so only the action of dilatory pupillae is seen which is mydriasis this is called as passive mydriasis because the sphincter pupillae innervation is cut and so the pupil gets big this is a passive process this is not actively done by the dilatory pupillae it is due to the loss of innervation of the sphincter pupillae so this is passive process now these are the mechanisms by which there is mitriasis and meiosis